Please insert additional coin. Fucking bullshit! Laughing at birds. I don't. I don't know if this is gonna work. I don't know if this is gonna work. There is no audio being picked up in OBS right now. What does that mean? That means that later on, if this goes properly, what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to take this video and match up with the audio in the video editor, right? So. I don't know if it's gonna work. I don't know if it's gonna work, but we're gonna try. So I'm gonna get into this. I got a couple of things I gotta do today. First of all, let's start off with this right here. Can you see it? Look, merch is available, okay? This is one design. I got another one back here that is being worked on. Look, pretty cool, man. So here's what we're doing. I had tees for 25 and dropping the price down to 10 because I need money because I need money and because it's a pandemic right now I know people don't really have money to blow on shit they don't really need so we'll drop the price down to 10 bucks for the t-shirts the long sleeves like this one will be 30 and hoodies will be 50 Custom designs can be done. Everything is hand painted by an independent artist as well as myself. I'm trying. I'm fucking up a couple t shirts here and there. So, you know, working on it. Anyway, this is a couple of days ago. BCHQ did a reaction for Woo Block's Crack Spot stories. And I honestly thought he was going to like it, but he didn't. And I think part of it is because, like he stated, sure, the negative, negative shit, whatever. It's called crack spot stories. It's not, that's not a place where you find a whole lot of positivity. Usually, I don't think that's always the case. But I think a lot of the reason why you don't like this song is because there's stuff that you missed. Not because you're stupid or because you weren't paying attention, but because it's very fast paced, it's from a different country. You know, when I listen to British rappers or, you know, rappers out of the UK, like, uh, Jess has been heavy in my rotation lately. I don't, I don't need to lie to nobody. Uh, you know, I've been listening in 1979 and uh, City of Industry, alcoholic author, you know, couple of those four hours heavy in the rotation dude so i understand it takes me a little bit of time to get used to it pick up the words and all that so i thought let me break this song down lyrically so that even if you don't like it at the end of the day you could still you could still look at it and go at least i understand i'm not saying you have to fall in love with it i'm not even saying you have to like it i just want you to be able to know what it is so without me running my yapper anymore i know we're already four minutes in shoot me please laughing at birds every saturday 5 a.m eastern standard time itunes spotify Castbox, tune in breaker stitcher overcast pocket cast 11 platforms all together go find one subscribe to it rate the podcast do all that bullshit that helps other people know that we exist and what it is that we're doing here now that I got all that out of the way, Cash App, PayPal for the merchandise. You can DM me on Instagram at Laughing Birds Pod, or you can send me a direct message on Twitter via at Laughing Birds. Yes, yes. Let's get started. Oh, come on now, off the top already. Mm. Come on now. Now look, I'm gonna wait. Mm. Yo, turn that TV up. Let me turn this down a little bit. All right, hold on. I'm going to break this down immediately. I don't know what this is going to sound like. It's probably going to sound like shit. So don't yell at me. Save your hate mail. There's nothing I could do. Unless you work for OBS, I don't want to hear it. Unless you work for OBS and you can fix it, I don't want to hear it. Now that I got that out of the way, 
he's saying, you know, Martin on right now, Martin on. That's because they got they got the sample of Martin Gaye in the song. I know it's like dry snitch, you're not supposed to say nothing, but I want you to understand what's happening. Even 20 seconds into the song. But now let's get to the verse, because I'm excited. Yeah, hey, yo, talk to him, stop. Mm. Everywhere. Come on, bro. I can fucking do this. Holy shit. This is my jam right now, dude. You ain't ready. You ain't ready. He said, Henny bottles everywhere smell like yak. What does he say? Henny bottles everywhere smell like yak. Cooking crack in the kitchen wearing my mask, I think he says. Woo! Hold on, hold on, hold on. Stop it. Let me bring it all the way back for a moment. He said, Henny bottles everywhere. Smells like yak. Bagging up crank in the kitchen wearing my mask. Now, here's why that's dope for a couple reasons. First of all, we're in the middle of a pandemic and everybody is wearing masks, right? So that's cool right off the dick tip. Here's what's even cooler about it. You don't hear... When people do drugs, bro, when people make drugs, I mean, I've seen the documentaries, I've lived in a crack house, I know what goes on, I never did crack, so fuck you for assuming, okay? It was a bad point in my life, I needed a place to live, so that's where I was at. It doesn't mean that I was, you know, whatever, it's a whole different, I I could talk about that another time. Anyway, you don't hear things like this i'm cook i'm bagging crack but i'm wearing my mask because i want to protect myself as much as i can from breathing in these terrible fumes so i don't get addicted to it you know what i mean like that's you don't hear that a lot in rap music so i think that deserves credit in and of itself right there just because of how authentic it is italy new gucci denim one slipper on Brookstone cushion in the barn number Okay, seven. here we go. Yo, kiss your ray. Yo, yo, yo. Tell a yellow bitch I got next. But the lack, bag and crack sitting Hold on. in the kitchen wear my mask. Hold mm-hmm. on. Tell him made in Italy. New Gucci denim. Mm. One slipper on Brookstone cushion in the barn number seven. Hugging my neck. Alright, now I don't know what bar number seven is. Uh, bottle number seven. I haven't had a drink in a couple of years. I'm not sober. Like, I'm not saying that because I want you to applaud me. Uh, I take thyroid medicine, so I'm, I can't drink. It interacts with the medicine. But alcohol turns me into a horrible human being anyway, so it doesn't matter. But now he's he's gone from, I'm in the kitchen, I'm telling you what I'm doing, to now I'm painting you the picture of, I'm sitting in my robe, I got expensive slippers on, I'm sipping on a bottle on number seven, and then he says, tell a yellow bitch I got next. I'm assuming he's talking about Coronas, but I don't, I don't know. Yo, kiss your ray. Yo, yo, yo. Tell a yellow bitch I got next. Mm. She fucking with robbers. Don't, don't want to hear, hear pussy, pussy so like, like Tasha's. This is stock. Come on. Crumbs hitting the floor. Crumbs hitting the floor. Fiends clicking their big lighters with Garfield eyeballs pulling them all nighters. Ha! Ah, stop it. Stop it. You don't know. You don't know how legit that is, dude. I've seen it. They don't have souls anymore. They're gone. They're not people. They're statues of who they once were and what they represented. Now they're just a drug. They just exist. It's fucking dark, man. Now, I mean, of course, you know, the bragging that goes along with rap music. Like, there's two... Why I like Pusher T, bro, is this guy has made it a point to say, yeah, I fucking sold drugs, dude. And I am not proud of it. I did what I had to do to survive. And I feel terrible that, you know, I would have, sometimes I had to sell to a fucking, a pregnant bitch. Like, I don't, I didn't want to do that. But the baby's going to be born addicted anyway. So what difference does it make if I sell it or somebody else is going to make the money? I need the money. So I understand, I understand both sides of the argument, but it's dark, bro. Things clicking they big lighters with golf mm. eyeballs, pulling them all nighters. Mm. Give me fifty push-ups, give y'all a little piece. <sighs> Faggots did a dime, niggas too, too weak. weak. For fun, shove a Susie Q in they face. All right. Let them smoke a rock with cake on their head and the cake. All right, now I'm assuming he's talking about jail. For fun, shove a Susie Q in their face. I don't know what that is. He's Staten Island. I'm Jersey. I'm not street. 
I'm not going to sit here and lie to nobody. I don't know everything about everything, right? But he says, make him smoke a stem of cake on his head in the gate. I'm assuming that means, like, you you turned into somebody's bitch now, and we got you smoking rocks with money on your head in the fucking thing just because we know you can. Like, you're we're fucking with you because we know that you know, we don't see you as a person anymore. It's fucked up, but there's a divorce of morality. Like doctors, bro. A doctor can't go into the hospital and uh, lose a patient and be devastated. You have to have a disconnect. This is the same thing. I'm not saying it's right, but it's what you have to do to survive. We have to, we have to separate ourselves from the fact that this is a human being that feels things and we just have to look at it for what it is. He might die with a stem on him. A stem on him is a crack pipe. For those of you that don't know, it's Mr. Madrox. Right? Who give a fuck? I'm the red shit. Uh, crack spot stars. He put a kilo in a pan. I was about to break his hand until it came back tan. Alright, now this is Sheik. The first one is Ghostface. This is Sheik Looch from. L-O-X, D-Block, in the fucking house, two guns up all motherfucking day, what's up, Yonkers and everybody, nerdy fucking white dude, bro, those are my guys, man, I don't fucking care, I've been listening to them forever, forever, it don't matter what's going on in the world, bro, I can put on, I can put on a solo project from P, Chic or Kiss, and I could go... Ugh, rap music is okay. It's okay for now. It's all right. So now he's saying, you know, dude, put a key in the in the pan, whatever. He was about to fucking kill him. I, I'm assuming they're testing the product, and the guy probably took the whole kilo and tossed it in instead of taking like a bump or whatever. I don't know. I've seen. Look, to tell you the truth, I lived in a drug house with a dude who was a coke dealer, but he was also a coke user. So I've watched him, I've watched drug dealers break down and and stomp on uh, kilos of coke, right? You know, mixing it with the baby powder or laxative or whatever. Like, I've seen that part of it, but I don't... I don't know what the rest of all that means. I've, I've watched a cook up rocks and shit. Like, I've seen how all that stuff works, but I don't... It's a very dark world, bro. And there was so much going on. I was, Honestly, I was just worried about, like, if the cops kicking the door right now, I'm going to jail for a long time. And this is not... Like, I'm a, I am smoke a little weed, dude. I don't... Not anymore. I'm t- at this time. Like, I don't... I don't do... I don't do crack. I mean, I did try coke, which, I mean, whatever. We're getting into the fucking thing, dude. Okay. He's dancing around the stove, stalks chilling in his roll. My hard knock life, I could have wrote that for whole. Shorty, give me a ginger ale and Dutch mask. That's right. Matter of fact, hand me the phone. I'm about to order Caspers. <laughs> all right, now he says, give me a ginger ale and Dutch masters. Well, first of all, it better be Canada Dry and the Honey Dutch masters, bro. Don't fuck around. If there's no Dutch master. You may substitute with the game, although preferably, I like white papers, a little easier on the lungs, but, you know, I smoked a lot of Dutches in my day, dude. I could roll a fucking Dutch like a motherfucker, bro. So, he's saying my hard knock life, I could have wrote that for Hope. In other words, like, I'm living the same life. He wrote it, but I could have wrote that album because I did the same shit. That's what he means. And he says, give me the phone about the order Caspers, which I'm assuming is a steakhouse. I don't know why. I would assume something like that. I've never heard of it. Again, I'm, I'm in New Jersey, and I'm broke, dude. I'm a fucking welfare case. I don't know nothing about expensive food, so I couldn't afford to park in a Whole Foods parking lot. Never mind go shopping inside Beans at the door I'm too lazy to let him in turkey sandwich barbecue chips hey, yo, ESPN. Yo, yo, yo. Oh, that kills me though to tell you the truth the drug dealer inside of me that makes me mad 
What do you mean you're too lazy to let him in? There's money at the door, motherfucker. You should be motivated always. I know. I know. Dude, I get it. I've been... That's what got me a... Bro, I'm telling you. Don't... If it, you know what? You know what? Just forget it. Sitting on the couch, I'm just trying to do the math. Uh-huh. She got ten polo shirts, or she asks him for his hat. Ah, come on. Stop it. Got a hundred polo shirts, or she asks him for his hat. She did a hundred dollars? Bootleg polo shirts, bro. You fuck. That's real. This is real rap. This is real life shit. I understand that. When you don't got a whole lot of money, but you need to go hit the swap meet or the flea market, and you gotta try to get some bootleg shit that almost looks real, so you can kind of live in the neighborhood, even though they're gonna make fun of you, you know, for wearing bootleg shit, but everybody is in the same shit, so whatever. I mean, I got fucking polo jeans, whatever, like, you know, the rip-off invitation ones, but I mean, I'm not into name brands anymore, like, I had to grow up, you know what I mean, but that's... See, that's the other thing, too. He said, today was a good day. Nobody got shot. No police coming through. That's how it is on our block. Now, that's that's a power statement. What he's saying is, like, I'm controlling. We're controlling the fucking plug, dude. So we make sure there's nobody getting crazy out here. You know, we, everything needs to run smoothly. This is an operation. Like any other operation, we're here to make money. And this business needs to run smoothly. And anybody that's going to fuck that up is going to have to answer for it. Boys fronting in Rolls Royces. I'm on the iPhone. Leg back examining choices. Two types of coke. We in the bathroom voting. We like take it. Hell- All right, hold on. See, now this, this part kind of gets me a little bit. Hold on. Pyrex boys fronting in Rolls Royces. Alright, Pyrex boys fronting in Rolls Royces. In other words, you don't really have the money to afford that Rolls Royce that you're driving around in, but you want to look like you got more than you actually do. That's what he's saying there. I'm on the iPhone, leg back, examining choices. Two types of coke, we in the bathroom voting, we like... He said two types of coke, we in the bathroom voting. Now, I don't know, I'm confused. Because to me, that sounds like a coke user and not a coke dealer. Why are you in the bathroom examining two different types of cocaine unless you plan on smoking or snorting some? You know what I mean? Like, I don't... I don't understand why you would do that in a bathroom unless he's flipping the perspective. Like take it, helicopter waiting, we voting, yo, gangsters to the death of it. Helicopter waiting, we voting, yo. Alright, so maybe they're going to pick up. Like, I got so much money, I'm showing up to the spot in the chopper. But, I mean, I'm going to take my time and make sure I get the right shit. Villains, a good hand chemist in 20 minutes, cake up and finish this for the... He said a good hand chemist can bake up and bag it in 20 minutes. In other words, what that means is what I was talking about before. If you're good at whipping, I think is what they call it, you can take cocaine and you can cook it into crack rocks. So it goes from coke, cooked to crack, bagged up and ready for the street in 20 minutes that's insane now i've seen it done i've seen it in my memory this dude would be at the stove he would grab like a spoon of coke right and then he would he brings it over to the gas stove dude and he's got playing cards two playing cards and he's mixing it, and he's doing something with it, and it's bubbling, and he is moving it around, and it forms into this little fucking rock thing, dude, it's like, it's like, it's like that big, not even, bro, and the smell coming off of that thing would choke a fucking horse, bro, if you never smell a crack cocaine in your life, I'm here to tell you, take a plastic bag that you get from the food store, and light it on fire, and breathe it in, That's what crack cocaine smells like. It is one of the most unforgettable smells you will ever smell in your life. I promise you, 
You smell crack cocaine once, you will never forget what that smell is. It is horrific. Like, is the difference between, in my world, there's a difference between crack and weed. Like, when I smell weed, part of my brain is like, oh, that smells, that smells good. Let's go check out what that is. When I smell crack, it's like, oh, that is, that's dangerous. Like, something inside of me, instinctually, I know. Nobody has to tell me. It's like you're being afraid of a snake, dude. Like, we're built to be afraid of these things from years of evolution. So when you smell that chemical smell, I guess that's, you know. The hallways, the long days, me and my hall bagging up. Shorty more races and bring out the four aces. Six. All right, so he said, long days in the hallways, bagging up, bring me some more razors and four aces. Now, I don't know... Aces could mean tens, you could mean tens, which could be bags, like I'm bagging up ten bags, I don't think that's how coke works though, that's more like weed. I don't. I only know weed math, bro, I don't know coke math, I'm sorry. I don't know coke and heroin math, I just, I don't. I, I know, anyway, he's saying like I'm, they're using the razors I guess to move around and cut the lines, so he's like bring me some more razors to get some fresh razors. You know, so we're talking about bagging up shit. He said, drug house with no work there. The worst fear is always a first gear, I think he said. Never the thirst gear. I don't understand what the fuck he's talking about. I can't understand him. So I'm American and this one missed me, but he's going very fast. And the way that he, this dude's rhyme style is kind of confusing to me. I know who he is. I know he's part of Wu-Tang, right? Like this is part of the reason why I never fucked Wu-Tang. Not because I don't like them. It's just because it's hard for me to understand a lot of it sometimes, like they move very quick for me. I can listen to a group like Bone Thugs and Harmony and just catch it, catch it. You know, like I'm I'm right there following along, but something like this at different speed, I don't know what it is. It's just set up to the first to the thirty first disperse. Yeah, be set up to the first to the thirty first disperse. Yeah, another that means welfare, social security, food stamps, all that. First and the fifteenth are the two first and third and the fifteenth. Those are the big paydays where everybody gets paid, right? You know, you know, whatever. So those are big unfortunately, those are big days for drug dealers. Bone Thugs and Harmony, bring it back again, first of the month. That song was about, you know, buying weed and making money on the first of the month because the junkies get paid on the first like it's it's sad but it's real i'm not gonna sit here and lie to you and say weed gets legalized in november that you know come fucking february 1st i'm not gonna be on my way to a dispensary because i would be but there's a difference between you know yes yeah, using marijuana because it, it helps and i mean even if you wanted to just get stoned it's it's better to smoke weed than it is to do crack I'm saying, I had a poster when I was a kid of a guy with a pipe in his hand. My mom hates this poster, but I don't, fuck her. She don't know it's cool, right? So, dude's got a pipe in his hand. It just says, marijuana, across the top of it, and it's a green poster. He kind of looks like this dude, where it's just an outline of a guy, and it goes, hey, at least it's not crack. And that's, I lived by that motto for a long time. Marijuana, at least it's not crack. Like, I could do worse. I told my mother that, bro. The first time that I got caught smoking weed it was a dope, dude. I had a fucking... I had one of these gimmicks. I had one of these gimmicks right here. You ever see this? I'm doing this shit in the fucking hallway. Trying to keep it on the down low. My makeshift bong, bro. And she opens the door like, Are you fucking serious? I go, Hey. At least it's not crack. I go, I could be shooting heroin in the fucking staircase. It's only fucking weed. Relax, will you? Like, I know what I'm doing. Let's get back to the fucking... People are so mad right now. Bring me a burger, yeah. the flame jump out once your first 
All right, so, you know, flame broils, but in other words, you get, I'll shoot you. So take that over there. Here comes my guy. We got the trays up in six. Yeah. That's usually where the guard be. Me, K, and J, Bob. Kali, J, and Rod Lee. My man. My guys. These are my guys. We got the tray. In other words, we got all the drugs laid out. And tr trays, I think it's because it goes in the oven. I don't fucking know, dude. I'm a weed guy. I'm not a coke guy. I'm so I bet the privilege of not having to sell crack cocaine in my life. I went the route of selling weed because I knew it was eventually I was going to get caught and I'd rather do a few months to a year than the rest of my life in prison. There's no reason for me to lie to anybody. I'm a bitch, dude. You know what I mean? I took the easy way out. What do you want from me? But he's saying, I got I got the works all here, right? The drugs are all here. And I got my guys with me. Bunch of my friends were all hanging out. We're, this is our job. This is our job. This is what we do. If we don't do this shit, then, you know, people don't get their... Come on. Bread clocking all night, the head's knocking. He said bread clocking all night, the head's knocking. So another, they're keeping, I think clocking means that they're keeping an eye on how much money they're making. Some dude that used to live next to me uh, tried to use that in a sentence one time. And when I asked him what the fuck does clocking mean, he was like, what? He's like, there's no way you don't know what that means. He's like, dude, you listen to rap music all day. You don't know what clocking means? He's like, oh, I get it. I get it. I get it. You, you think I'm like a cop or something, so you don't want to fucking, you know, give up the lingo, which apparently is the real thing. If you, if you talk about, like, you have knowledge of this shit, I guess that's probable cause. I'm not a lawyer. I don't know. But I don't know what it means. I don't know what it means. No feds, just Kevin Tile, West watching, bagging up it. I don't, I missed that line. Just Kevin Tile, West watching. I'm, I'm sure that's a reference to, you know, we're fucking, whatever. I don't know. The table while we chit chat. Pass the Philly, wash your hands for you hit that. Ah, stop it. He said, sit around the table while we chit that, while we chit chat. Pass the Philly, wash your hands before you hit that. That's the realest sentence I think I ever heard in my life, bro. Like, you're bagging cocaine. You better go wash your fucking hands before you put your hands on my fucking... Before you put your fucking fingers on my blunt, bro. You don't... Like, come on, dude. That's legit. That's legit. That's legit. Young niggas getting it. Everybody G'd up. The mm. other niggas only made sales when we read up. Oh, uh, they only made sales when we read up. I right, tell me about it. I uh, look. I'm not. Stop it. Stop it. Oh, the roller flip, burn out in the beeper. White Katie and Rhonda, Stacy and Shaniqua. Yeah, cocaine. Wow, that was the first time I caught that. He said White Katie, Rhonda, and Shaniqua. I didn't realize that there was a white lady in there too. Good for her. I mean, honestly, not. I shouldn't be surprised. But don't you fuck that? I mean, dude. Let's be honest, there's a cultural divide. Okay, anybody that says that there is not is a fucking liar. That's just what it is, so excuse me, I'm a little surprised when I hear... So, like, not that Jada wouldn't hang out with white people, that's not what I mean. But you get what the fuck I'm saying, dude. Like, you don't... You gotta be in. You gotta be in. If you're coming around this spot, dude, I gotta know you. Like, know you know you. So... You know, that just surprises me. Like, that must mean that she's either she's a maybe she's the tester or, you know, she's been in the neighborhood for so long. Everybody knows her. So, she, you know, she kind of hangs out. I don't know. I don't know why it's important. Weed in 40s. That's when I was a shorty. Crack spot stories. Till Allah be the glory. So he's basically saying, you know, when I was younger... When I was younger, that was the shit that I did. You know, 40s and selling crack and all that. But I've grown up and I've changed my life. Now, a lot of people don't get the opportunity to do that. A lot of people don't get the opportunity to change their lives. I understand. I understand. I've seen it on every angle, dude. I've seen the drug dealers. I've seen drug users. I've seen it all. Every angle. 
I mean, from uh, kids uh, being uh, left in in the fucking living room of a dr- just it's just just heartbreaking shit, bro. Heartbreaking shit, dude. And I know you're like, oh, these these fucking cunts. You know what you're selling is poison. But dude, there is, I'm not saying it's right, but there is something to be said for. If I don't sell it, somebody else will, so why should I not make a dollar to get by? I'm not saying it's, I'm not saying it's a good thing to do. But don't tell me, there's a line out of a a Ghetto Boys song where Willie D says, you could talk the hot shit if you want to, but don't tell me what you won't do. Till you're down on your luck and nobody gives a fuck. Bill collectors at your heels. And you know what I mean? Like, don't don't tell me what you will and you won't do until you're fucking dead broke, really. Staring down the barrel of debt, no food in your cabinet or your refrigerator. And then tell me about how you're too good to sell drugs. Tell me about it. I'll be honest with you. One of the most difficult things in the world to do is... To be broke and not fall back into that lifestyle. It was a lot easier. I'm not bragging. I'm not bragging. There's nothing... There's nothing good about it. A lot of horrible things can happen. It doesn't matter what it is that you're selling. Even if you're only selling weed and you can tell yourself, like, it's not... It's not a big deal. But it is a big deal, dude. You don't have control over what those people do when they leave. You can make the same argument with pharmacies and everything. I get all that. We're not talking about those savages right now. We're talking about us. Right? They 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 worked it all out. They have their asses covered. We fucking don't. So if some asshole buys a 20 off of me and goes and crashes their car, that's my fault now. I didn't do it to them but you, you understand what I'm trying to say so like dude it's easy to trick yourself into thinking that like you know whatever it's not a big deal it's always a big deal but at the same time bro I lived better I was stressed out all the time right I was worried constantly always looking over my shoulder but I wasn't broke I wasn't rich wasn't rich but I wasn't broke we didn't need things do you know what I'm trying to say? We we didn't have more than we need. I didn't get greedy. I didn't take more than what we had to have. That's not what it was about. That's not what it was about at all. Well, like I've, I've talked enough. Nobody's gonna fucking nobody gives a shit about my. Well, no, fuck that. It's a crack spot story. So I'm telling you a fucking story, motherfucker. If you want a fake reaction, then go find some douchebag channel that will dance around in their goddamn mother's living room while they pretend it's the first time they ever heard that song. Looking at you, asshole with the glasses on that's heard every metal song ever and pretends like you don't know what you're what you're listening to. Meanwhile, you know exactly the cues of when the song gonna start and pause the fuck off you and everybody else bro sick of this shit i'm only doing this right now because you know and i've thought about this a lot whatever whatever it is what it is don't like my video i don't give a fuck ten dollars bro what do you want to do not this not this i don't have i don't have the other ones near me but look get the fucking merch dude Get the merch, dude. $10 t-shirts. Nobody is going to fucking hook you up. Like, I'm going to hook you up. Nobody. I'm trying to be legit here, people. Okay? I'm trying to be legit. I understand, dude. I'm like five moves. If I wanted to. If I want. I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to stop talking because all I'm going to do. All I'm going to do is give myself trouble. So, I'm just not. I'm going to not. I'm going legit, people, okay? I've been, I've been, I've behaved for 13 fucking years, and I want to continue to do that. But in order to do that, I need a revenue stream, man. I can't, I can't do this shit. Food stamps only go so far. I got no reason to lie to nobody. You want me to sit here and and pretend like YouTube is my life, and, you know, I, I live and die by every view? I don't. I don't. 2,000, 6,000, 8,000 views don't mean shit to me. Because it doesn't pay me. 
I don't see a dime. It doesn't matter how many people click it, bro. That's why we're, we're moving. I'm not moving. I'm not trying to move shirts because I think I got enough people behind me. I'm trying to start a fucking movement because you don't... Nobody feeds you, bro. You got to do shit yourself. Now, I can sit around and I can feel bad for the situation I'm fucking stuck in. Or I can try to figure out a way to legitimately get out of it. Which is what the fuck I'm trying to do. I don't want to go back to jail, dude. And I didn't go for a long time, but that's the point. I don't want to go back to pissing in a cup in front of a grown man that's to stare at my dick to make sure I'm actually pissing. I don't want to go back to that. House visits at random times, they could just go through your shit whenever. You know, I don't I don't want to go back to all that, dude. Lawyers' fees and bails bondsmen and fucking deny apartments and you can't rent nowhere and now everybody thinks it's 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 fucking it's a horror show. Sorry. Look, I'm I'll go do another video.